Good morning. And welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church. All of you, especially those who are visiting with us. I just saw that uh, Norma Jean brought the whole clan today. Welcome, everyone. And also welcome all Facebookers who are listening and watching us on Facebook today. This is the fifth Sunday in Lent, and we will talk about being a servant. May God bless us all as we worship our Lord and Savior Jesus. Now, if you can, please stand so we can start the service. And we start today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins into God. Bearing our sins and in need of a Savior, let us go to our Heavenly Father asking for His forgiveness. Most merciful Heavenly Father, you promise a covenant written in your people's hearts. Gracious Holy Spirit, through your use of word and sacrament, many people know the Lord. Jesus taught that the greatest in the kingdom is the servant of all. God promised in the new covenant, I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sins no more. And the sacrifice of himself, Jesus being perfect, became the source of eternal salvation. As a call and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here the worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. And the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and a steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word through Jesus Christ, your Son, O Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Let us read together. The first reading is the reading of the Psalm, Psalm 119. I'll read the first verse and you follow me. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me astray from your commands. Praise be to you, Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in the Lord all the statutes, and I rejoice in the great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I 
I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. Amen. This morning, the Red Cross blood drive is this coming Wednesday, March 24th, from 1 to 6 here at the church. There is an urgent need for donors. The Old Testament reading this morning is from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant. Though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel from that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their weakness, wickedness and will remember their sins no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The, the epistle is from Hebrews chapter 5, the first ten verses. Every high priest is selected from among the people and is appointed to represent the people in matters related to God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray, since he himself is subject to weakness. This is why he has to offer sacrifices for his own sins as well as for the sins of the people. And no one takes the honor on himself, but he receives it when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest, but God said to him, You are my son. Today I have become your father. And he says to another pl place, You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who would save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son, though he has, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him and was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If the congregation can, please stand for the reading of the, go the gospel. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Mark, chapter 10, verses 32 to 45. They were on the way up to Jerusalem with Jesus leading the way, and the disciples were astonished, while those who followed were afraid again. He took the twelve aside and told them what was going to happen to him. We are going up to Jerusalem, he said, and the Son of Man will be delivered over the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles, who will mock him and spit on him, flog him and kill him. Three days later, he will rise. Then James and John, the son of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you, he asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other one at your left side in your glory. 
You don't know what you're asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. This place is belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be a slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Let us all confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. You can find on the last page of the hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, O Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven, sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated during the children's message. I know there are a few more back there, but it's been so long since we've done this, more than a year, that maybe you're being a little shy today. I don't know. Do you want to come a little closer, girls? And Jamie, can just move over this way a little bit? Jonah, sorry. I saw Jamie. Where's he? He's in the back. <laughs> All right. Um, right now... We have a special time that we're getting ready for Easter. We're preparing for Easter. And when we get ready for Easter here at our church, we do some things. Did you notice that up on the big cross, there's a purple, there's a purple cloth hanging? Did you notice that up here, there's purple? Thing? Look, at there's some things that remind us about what happened to Jesus before he, uh, before he was on the cross. And you guys are used to getting ready for things, too. You prepare like... When you prepare to go to school, look at me here, Jonah, look at, when you prepare to go to school, do any of you do this? What's that? You're loud. You brush your teeth, do you brush your teeth? No, don't tell us if you don't. Do any of you do this? What's that? Comb your hair, do you do that? Maybe, <laughs> maybe. Do any of you do this? You don't know what that was? Well, a shower? Well, I, was, I do take a shower, but watch this. Watch it one more time. Do you take your backpack to school? <laughs> Maybe you don't put it on your back anymore. Maybe you roll it or do something else with it. I don't know. What if you were getting ready? You do? What if you were getting ready? for having company for dinner. What if Pastor Copper was coming to your house for dinner? What would you do to get ready? Make dinner. There's somebody who wants to make dinner, Pastor. What else would you do to get ready? Charlie, what would you do? 
Get on some good clothes. Yeah, that's a good idea. What would you do, Jonah? Would you, would you like do something on the rug or nothing? You wouldn't because your mom would probably do that. But maybe you'd clean up the house. Would you clean house? I would. The pastor was coming for dinner. Well, I've got some things. You would clean house? Oh, that's some nice. Blakely would help clean house. You know, I've got some things to show you today, and they're in my eggs. And they're hints about ways that we get ready to learn about Easter. And you've been doing that in your Sunday school classes. You've been studying about, learning about things that happened before Jesus died, the things that happened in the week before he died. And we're going to do some more of that today in our classes. But let me see if you know this. Let me see if I can find my right. This is egg number one. I've got a hint in here. See if you can tell what it is and see if you can tell me what this has to do with Jesus getting ready. You have to come a little closer. What is it? Those are palm branches. Now, what did we learn about? What did we learn about palm branches? What do we do with them, Charlie? You lay them on the ground. And you wave them up high. That's right. Because Jesus came to Jerusalem, and the people did that for him, because Jesus is the king. Do you remember that, Blakely? You told me that the other day. Jesus is the king. That's right. Now, a king usually would never do this next thing. A king wouldn't do it, but Jesus did it anyway. Can you see what this is? Say it. Charlie, can you see what that is? You, she can't, you gotta come closer then. Maybe you better sit right down here so you can see my pictures. I couldn't get them very big in these eggs. What do you see? Faith? Shoes, sandals. Are they, are they clean? Are they? They're dirty, they're in the dirt and they're dirty feet. Now, what did we do last week? You put your feet in the water. In my class, we washed each other's feet. And you, I saw you had footprints in your class. Jesus, would, Jesus washed his disciples' feet. Do you know why? Because he loves them so much. He loved them just like he loves us. And so he did something a king would never do. He washed their feet. All right. right. And he did that right before they were going to sit down at a table and they were going to eat. And so look at this picture. Jesus was sitting with his disciples and he was eating and he had a cup, a chalice, and a plate, and he said to the disciples, this is my body, this is my blood. I want you to remember what I've done for you. I want you to remember this. Right after that, after their dinner, this is what happened. He went to the garden, and in the garden, he went with his disciples because he wanted to Pray. He wanted to pray with his disciples, but instead, he did pray with his disciples, but he got arrested. And after he got arrested, do you remember what this is? Say, can you see it? You might have to come closer, Jonah. These are real sharp. Charlie? Yeah, they're vines with thorns on them. Did you say that? I can't see you, Michael. Yeah, they're, they're thorns, and they put those on Jesus' head and pushed it down really hard. And they whipped him, and they hurt him. They were, not very, they were not kind, and they were mean, and they yelled mean things at him. And then, the next morning, let's see if I can get the next one here in order. Get my blue egg. There's a cross. And they, took, they made Jesus carry his cross up to the hill where they were going to crucify him. And do you know the same people who said, Hosanna, Jesus is the king. Some of those same people said, crucify him, crucify him, put him on the cross. Now when Jesus', when Jesus body was taken down, let's see if I can find the next one. Well, let's do this first. What is it, Michael? It's a nail. It's a big, old, rusty nail. When Jesus was up on the cross, when Jesus was, before he was up on the cross, they pounded nails into his, his hands and into his, into his feet to keep him on the cross. 
And we have a bunch of these nails. Sammy's got some. Sammy's sitting up here, not because he's one of the kids, but he's helping me today. He's got the other nails. So Sammy's the big kid. I've got some nails here, though. Look at these nails. They're big nails. This nail might be some of the sins that we do. The reason Jesus had to die on the cross is because he was there to save us from our sins. So this nail might be because maybe you didn't tell the truth sometime. And this nail might be because maybe you were with your friends or your sister or brother and you were not kind. Maybe you were fighting. This nail could be because maybe we didn't do what our mom and dad told us to do or asked us to do. And this nail might be because when it was time to go to church on Sunday, you said, I don't want to go to church. I don't want to go to Sunday school. Maybe you complained. So all these nails, you like, I'm so glad you like going to Sunday school, Jonah. I'm glad you wouldn't complain about that. Sammy's got nails up here. And when, what he'd like to do is help you put a nail into the cross. So if you come in and line up right here in front of Sammy, he's going to help you if you need help. Some of you don't need help. I bet Faith can handle that. And you're going to put a nail on the cross and remember that it was because of our sins that Jesus had to die on the cross. And while they're doing that, I would just like to remind all of our um, church family members that we are having a special celebration of Christmas, uh, Christmas of Easter uh, on April 4th, Easter morning, and there are two services that morning, and in between the services there will be Easter breakfast, and you can come in and eat with us and enjoy some of the things that we're going to do for Easter, but you can also take it home with you if you'd like to. And uh, very good. And we hope that many people can come. There's going to be a lot of fun things for the kids to do. We're, we're having a resurrection skit and some games, and they'll sing some songs for you, and, uh, and they'll have a, a, an Easter egg hunt. When these Easter eggs that I'm going to give them, today you're each going to get an Easter egg, but these Easter eggs are not going to have anything in it like treats or sweets, or, but some of the ones on Easter will. So I've got one more egg I'd like to open. After Jesus' body... It's a golden egg. After Jesus' body was taken down from the cross, and they put his, he did, but they put him in the tomb. And then remember in the morning, early Easter morning, when the ladies came to the tomb, and they came looking for Jesus, and this is what they saw. In my golden egg, there's a golden, an angel, a golden angel. And the angel said to them, Jesus is not here, he is risen. He's alive. That's right. Jesus is not here. He is risen. They were so excited to hear that. And we're going to celebrate that on Easter, so we'll enjoy talking about that. Um, it reminds us that Jesus rose from the tomb, and it was empty, but there's an angel or a butterfly in your egg. Here are your eggs, because the the angel reminds us that Jesus is not here. He is risen. So each one of you can come over here and get an egg. And you can go back to your seat so you can open it when you get back to your seat. You got an orange one. There you go. All right. All right.
May the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of us this morning. When we want to meditate the words of the Gospel of Mark, where Jesus said, If you want to be the good servant, you serve others. One of the cover the stories of this week as I am watching the news it was about this lady, an 18 years old lady who got a surprise she is a, um, a waitress in a restaurant in Texas the reporters came and covered this story saying that after serving a single man in a restaurant she got a thousand dollar tip did you ever give a thousand dollar tip? I never did. <laughs> the girl is a um, senior in high school and is struggling to pay her bills, saving as much money as she can to go to college. And she was, of course, very surprised to receive that amount of money as a tip. So she, and the, um, to the report, love to say thanks to the person who gave a tip, but the man wants to stay anonymous. He doesn't want to show his face to her. I am sitting over there writing my message and I am thinking. I am thinking about that this story and how it is connected to the gospel of Jesus this morning. For waiters and waitresses, the tip, it is the deserving reward for their service. For others, it's more than that. For others, it is the generosity of people. It's what people want to give, what comes from their hearts to give. It's not only paying for their service. But one way or another, we must agree that no tip would come to a waiter or waitress if first, if first service would not be offered. And this is what Jesus means in the gospel. If you want to be the first, you have to serve. If you want to be the greatest, you have to be the least. If you want to be good, you have to serve others. There is no tip. There is no reward without service. And in the kingdom of God, it's not different. The lesson of the gospel today reminded the disciples, especially James and John, as they had that weird request to Christ, that they have to serve. There is no reward without service. Sounds weird when Jesus says that, that we have to serve so much, but that's the way in the kingdom of God. John and James came to Jesus and said, give us a place of honor and power, and then show us how much you love us. Jesus said, Jesus said to them, give me your faith, give me your love, because I already showed to you how much I have loved you. And the cross and the nails today are the proof that God loves us so much. He gave his son Jesus to die for us. And in that way, Jesus served the whole humankind with his blood. Sacrifice on the cross. What could be better than that? And as the disciples ask this weird question, Jesus then asks something in return. Or at least he, he asks a question in return. Can you drink this cup? Can you be baptized into the baptized? I am being baptized. And Jesus refers, the cup always refers in the Old Testament as suffering. In some places, the wrath of God upon his people. 
in the baptism of Jesus is referring to, it is the immersing of Jesus into that situation where he is going to suffer and die. The wrath of God and the punishment of God that would fall on us, it fall on Jesus. In all the things Jesus went through, that we should go through, Jesus did in our place. So those questions Jesus asked the disciples and they said yes. And very soon they would realize what it does mean to serve Christ when Peter, when Orana Peter, the first martyr of, of the era after Jesus when he was killed in one arena. And then John, after all the persecution and suffering, finally died too. So both of them suffer for the cause of Christ. And then they understood what it does mean. Drink the cup and being baptized. We don't have to go through all the suffering persecutions that the disciples did. But Jesus asked us to also take up our cross and follow him. And the cross means that once we take we show that we are servants. That we came to this world not to be served, not to be the first, not to live, and this is important. And, and this is one of the things that we many times forget to preach about it when we talk about this reading. Christians should not be selfish. That's what Jesus means with <clears throat> servanthood. Jesus is heading to Jerusalem and this is the second or third time he is talking about going to Jerusalem to suffer, to die and the disciples ask the selfish question. First was Peter. When Jesus said, Peter, I'm going to Jerusalem and, Jesus, and then Peter said, Lord, I'm not going to let you. And Jesus said, get behind Satan because nobody and nothing could be in the way of Jesus to the cross. That's God's plan for his servant, for God's servant, Jesus. Now the disciples ask this weird and selfish question as Jesus again announced that he is going to the cross. But that is nothing new in human history. Humans, men, have been selfish since the beginning. Adam wants to be like God and then he ate from the fruit of the tree. The devil said, Adam, if you eat that fruit, you're going to be just like God. You're going to have all the power. You're not going to even need God. And he ate it. From the beginning of man's creation, man has been selfish. This sin of me first gets in the middle of our relationship with God and not only with God. When we don't have the servanthood mentality, then the selfish sin comes before and, and cause damages to our marriages, to our relationships, and in all the places that are where we go. But Jesus died also to forgive us from all these sins, the sins of selfishness. But Jesus also cared for the last and for the least. He loved and healed those who are physically, mentally, and emotionally broken. He ultimately died for the sins of the whole world as we always preach in the church and listen in the gospel. My selfishness your selfishness, your sins, my sins, even those sins of pride and craving for being or trying to be the first and the greatest, just like the disciples. We are not different. At the end of the gospel, Jesus makes an invitation for you and for me. Jesus said, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. 
And whoever wants to be first must be, look at the word, must be a slave. A slave. A slave has no only the work and do what the master says. And this is what we do as Christians. We do what our master says. And it seems to be a little awkward to act like a servant all the time. And in servanthood. But this is what Jesus asks us to do. The Old Testament says there's a, there is a new covenant. There is a new covenant for the people of Israel. There is a new covenant for us. It's based not in sacrifices. It's not based in what I do. It's based on, on what Jesus did already. I don't have to come with doves and blood and all kinds of sacrifices before God. The ultimate sacrifice was done. And that's the motive why I serve. That's the motive why I put my selfishness to the side. Follow Christ and serve my brothers and my sisters. Jesus said, you don't do like the Gentiles that are always looking to exercise in authority. If you want to be mine, then you serve. Then you serve. Serve in your family. Serve your neighbors. Serve in your community. Serve your wife, your sons, daughters. Serve your church with your gifts. Serve not looking for a reward. Because the greatest and the best reward you already have. Through faith in Christ Jesus, you already have the eternal life. What else? What else can you expect? What else would be better than this? Jesus said, well, the second uh, chapter of Philippians Jesus made himself nothing but by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. He becoming obedient to death to give us what any power or any authority in this world could ever give to us. Forgiveness of sins and life everlasting. May God bless us all as we in our lives always look for the good of our neighbors and serve God with humility. In Jesus' name, amen.
You can stay just the way you are. Let us uh, talk with God in prayer. You can follow the prayers on our bulletin. Heavenly Father, but to serve, help us not, Lord, our authority over one another, but humbly serve one another in our homes, communities, and congregation as Christ has so humbly served us. Lord, in your mercy. Your Heavenly Father, look in mercy on our president and all those to whom you have given earthly authority. Guard them from the temptation to lord it over us improperly, that they might faithfully serve according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy. Your Heavenly Father, you watch over, protect, and defend us through the service of others. Bless, we pray, the men and women who serve in our military, police forces, and all emergency services, who, like your son, are often called on to lay down their lives for us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, as your only begotten son learned obedience through what he suffered, we pray that you would bless, sustain, and relieve. Clarice Alexander, Jim Alexander, Ashley Baker, Bill Bass, Gary Borgert, Helen Borgert, Mary Lee Brizendine, Emma Douglas, Gina Foster, Marge Friedmeier, Larry Gish, Joe Green, Karen Hagmeyer, Burnell Haldeman, Sherry Hampton, Iris Hack, Ruth Higgins, Janice Howard, Joyce Kisling, Paula Copper, Haley Leo, Brad O'Neill, Billy Rader, Michael Rax, David Schubert, Aileen Sheriff, Jody Sheriff, and Jack Voigt. And all who suffer in our midst, O Lord, that walking the way of the cross with your Son, they may know the fullness of his eternal salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we also pray for the family and friends of our brother in Christ, Freddie Schlup Jr., who passed away Wednesday. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will be with the family and the friends and give to them, O oh gracious God, the comfort of the resurrected Christ. We also pray, O oh Lord, for the family and friends of Ron Thompson, who passed away yesterday, that they also will receive by the Holy Spirit the comfort of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who said, I am the resurrection and the life everlasting. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, for all of those who are still suffer with COVID, for those who are mourning, for those who are sick, we ask your blessing upon them. We ask your blessing also upon our congregation and all of those who serve faithfully. Be with them. Be with all of us, gracious God, as the week starts. Be with us as we work, going to school, driving. Be our Lord and Savior. Protect us and guide us, gracious God. Into your hands, Heavenly Father, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The congregation, please stand. If you can, let us pray together the prayer that our Lord and Savior Jesus asked us all to pray, taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, help be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. You all receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and be with you. Amen.